Tonight, the results of the two weeks of Pullman fundraiser. And the new way you could get to work or classes. Plus, a new school at WSU makes its debut. Murrow News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Abby Tudor. And I'm Ijene Taylor. Welcome to Murrow News 8. To start tonight, we highlight the two weeks of Pullman fundraiser that came to an end with quite a bit of success. Patrick Gerardis joins us live on Glen Terrell Mall with the results from local businesses. Patrick? The two weeks of Pullman fundraiser aided the nonprofit Cougar Health Fund while promoting mental health awareness and sexual assault prevention. The Cougar Health Fund saw success throughout the first week with just over $2,000 in donations. Several businesses in Pullman participated in this fundraiser, including the Paradise Creek Brewery, which made the most significant contribution of $400. Other businesses included the Pubs and Cups Cafe, College Hill, Coog Store, and Rico's Pub. Each business donated between 3 to 7 percent of their sales to the Cougar Health Fund. This project followed a similar fundraiser titled 30 Days of Pullman, which took place two years ago. However, the current version saw much more success. ASWSU Director of Community Affairs Keegan Otter led the project and says it's difficult for students who live on campus to involve themselves throughout other areas of Pullman. Otter wanted this year's fundraiser to help motivate WSU students to get involved in areas off campus as well. Otter also hopes that this fundraiser could expand to Moscow to encourage collaboration between the two cities in future years. Reporting live from Glen Sorrell Mall, I'm Patrick Gerardis, Murrow News 8. Thanks, Patrick. Pullman residents can expect a property tax increase within the next year to accommodate bonds. One bond covers the funds for a new city hall and parks and recreation facility. The other funds parks and path upgrades. Voters approved both bonds last February. The average Pullman resident paid more than $3,000 in property taxes in 2018 and their bills could increase by at least $120. Whitman County Assessor Robin Jones expects a new calculation of taxes by mid-February. Another change you might see? Buses on campus leaving their crimson and gray colors and going green. Pullman Transit applied for two grants to pay for three brand new fully electric buses by 2021. The regional mobility grant would cover the cost for new infrastructure in the transit building to accommodate for charging stations and the increase in power needed to charge the buses. Due to the clean air legislation, Pullman Transit cannot afford the total cost of more diesel buses, but with the grant, they'll only need to cover 20% of the cost of an electric bus. An added benefit, electric buses also require less maintenance. The Phi Gamma Delta fraternity, also known as Fiji, completed a two-week supervised probation period following an incident early last month. Videos with fraternity members dressed up in grass skirts, singing and dancing circulated around the internet. Since the publishing of the video, the fraternity has made formal apologies to the Asian Pacific American Student Coalition, as well as Asian American and Pacific Islander student organizations. The fraternity says they will continue to think of ways they can celebrate their philanthropy without appropriating culture. WSU opened up a brand new school back in July, but Logan Plant went to the opening party to find out what makes this school unique. What do you get when you combine a DJ, a crowd of people, and cake? A party. But this isn't your conventional college kickback. It's the launch party and open house for WSU School of Languages, Cultures, and Race, which combines WSU's programs for comparative ethnic studies, foreign languages and cultures, humanities, and social sciences into one school. WSU opened the school on July 1st, but the party just happened so students could discover new opportunities and reflect on their time in the school so far. I've sat in on a lot of other language courses here at WSU. All of them create this really fun vibe that makes people want to say um, uh, these everyday sentences to each other. There's been ups and downs, but I would still call the Japanese faculty easily my favorite professors I have on campus. Students in foreign language classes get to learn phrases like Washington Shuritsu Daigaku De, Nihongo no Hanash Kato Naraimashita. But they also get the opportunity to learn about study abroad programs. 
So we have the spring break trip, uh, Guatemala Hearts in Motion is where they go every year and they do a medical mission so our Spanish students usually serve as translators. And then in the summer we have two trips to Germany and one trip to France. Thanks to the four programs combining into one school, there are more resources for students to benefit from. Now that all the departments combined into one, we have a larger school which means more funding, more hands on deck, more faculty, more students, more staff to kind of help out. We are able to create additional levels of support. One language sets you in a corridor for life. Two languages open every door along the way. Staff at the School of Languages, Cultures, and Race hopes to keep opening doors for students at WSU. Logan Murrow, News 8. You know, it's great that WSU is expanding to new areas. I know, I really wish I could take part in it, but it's already my senior year. And when we come back, how people are honoring a fallen former Pullman track, track star. And the mysterious packages being sent to public figures, including former presidents, when more News 8 continues. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. An unknown source sent live homemade explosive devices to former Presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, as well as CNN offices in Manhattan. The Secret Service says they discovered the packages right away through routine mail screening procedures. None of the intended recipients got the packages, and law enforcement promptly removed the package from CNN's mailroom. Officials say the devices look like pipe bombs, and they think they all came from the same individual. President Trump says top explosive experts will work on inspecting the packages. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have confirmed that 62 kids have a mysterious illness, leaving them paralyzed. The CDC suspects another 65 cases will appear the same way. The updated numbers released about a week ago, and federal health officials still don't know what causes this acute flaccid myelitis. The confirmed polio-like cases spread across 22 undisclosed states. The CDC lists potential causes as viruses, genetic disorders, or environmental toxins. The CDC's website urges worried parents to help their kids practice hand washing and to apply insect repellent. The man accused of threatening to shoot up schools in Moscow back in March appeared in court earlier this week. The Lataw County 2nd District Court sentenced Michael Mastro to 20 days in jail and placed him on probation for two years, as well as ordering him to pay a $255 fine. In a YouTube video posted this spring, Mastro threatened to shoot up two Moscow schools. Police arrested him after he threatened a debt collector over the phone. If Mastro violates his parole, he will face up to a year in jail. The Pullman community continues to mourn the death of University of Utah track star and Pullman High School grad Lauren McCle McCluskey. She died Monday night after her ex-boyfriend allegedly shot her. Community members can honor McCluskey life by attending a prayer vigil at the Pullman High School track tonight at 6. A second vigil will happen on November 1st at the same time and same place. Our thoughts go out to, to the McCluskey family and we wish them the best. After the break, Jennifer Power will join us from the Weather Center and we'll see if the weather will have a trick or treat for us. Stick around. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. 
750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. You know what? Halloween is coming up this weekend. Jennifer Power joins us in the Weather Center to tell us whether we'll need some coats for those trick-or-treaters. Jennifer? Thanks, Ajene. So yeah, today, guys, we had a high of 60 degrees, but um, we're having a low of 50 degrees. So we're still in that weird transitional period of time when our Mornings are going to be a lot warmer and then our evenings are going to get a lot colder and that is pretty much what it's like across the board on the east side of the state. You, as you can see, a lot of cities are at like 60 degrees and then they'll drop to 40 degrees, which is a big difference. That's not quite the case on the west side. They're looking at around 60 degrees during the day, but then they drop to high 40s, low 50s in the evenings. So they're slightly warmer than us, but they're definitely going to have a lot more clouds over there. For tomorrow, we're still looking at a high of 61 degrees, then we're dropping down to about 50 in the evening. So you might want to layer up just so you can take those layers off when it's warmer, put them back on when it's a lot colder. For our five-day forecast and looking at this weekend for Halloween, on Friday we're looking at some showers, so that might put a damper on some of your um, pre-Halloween plans as far as festivities. So if you're going out to that pumpkin patch, you're taking that hayride, you might want to bundle up and be prepared for some showers. Same thing for Saturday and Sunday. We're not going to get those showers, but it's going to be cloudy, so there's a slight possibility of that and it's going to be colder in the evenings. So any late night festivities or if you're going out that night, um, you might want to bundle up because it is going to be slightly chilly. And I hope you guys have a great weekend with celebrating any Halloween festivity plans that you are looking for. Thanks guys, back to you. Thanks Jennifer. So it might sound like a scene from Ghostbusters, but did you hear the Titanic is coming back? Wait, the Titanic is coming back? Yes! And when after the break, we'll tell you about it. Stay with us. Over a century later, the Titanic will set sail once again in 2022. After a financial dispute delayed the ship's construction for a few years, the $500 million project will now continue. The Titanic II will leave from Dubai and trace the ship's original route from Southampton, England to New York. The ship will also feature the same cabin layout from the original, along with a similar passenger count of 2,400 and a crew of 900. But don't you worry, the Titanic will have modern navigation and plenty of lifeboats. I am so excited for that. If I don't get a ticket, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> Thank you for watching tonight. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great evening, and don't forget to follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, Pullman. I can't believe it.